we're going to look at trying to identify where some of the structures are of the horse's lower leg. So starting first of all with the bones of the leg, we've got this bone here which is known as the cannon bone and this runs down front of the leg to the area known as the fetlock joint where there it meets the long pastern which is this bone here and that then joins to the short pastern which just comes inside the hoof capsule. Then inside the hoof there's another bone known as the pedal bone and then in at the back of the pedal bone which of course we can't see is the navicular bone and then when we look at the back of the leg we've got a very small bone at the back of the knee called the pisiform bone which is a really important bone when we're bandaging horses we need to make sure that it's not too tight then running down the back of the leg we've got two more bones called the sesamoid bones and then we've got the navicular bone and that rests in behind the underside of the pedal bone. At the end of the leg we've then got the hoof. This area is known as the coronet or coronary band. This is the hoof wall and the hoof capsule actually acts as a box, a protective box to keep all of those structures in. To be able to understand it more then we'd need to have a look at the underside. So to have a look at the underside of the hoof is going to be really useful. So the area here is known as the sole of the hoof and the function of the sole is to basically support the structures of the hoof and it can yield a little bit. We then have the area known as the frog and the frog has two areas known as the point of the frog and the cleft of the frog. And the frog helps to work a little bit as an anti-slipping and also anti-concussion device for the horse. We also have the bulbs of the heel and then we also have the two bars here and here. And the idea is that the bars will yield a little bit and so it all helps with the anti-concussion and anti-slip device of the foot. We also have an area known as the white line and if you see where my finger's going around the edge of the shoe, you can see some nail heads. And the white line divides up the outer hard structure of the hoof to the more sensitive structures of the hoof inside. So we've had a look at some of the structures of the lower legs so far. In addition, we're now going to have a look at the flexor tendons and also at the suspensory ligament and other ligaments. So the flexor tendons are responsible for when the leg flexes in movement. At the back you have what's known as the superficial digital flexor tendon, runs all the way down. Slightly in front of that you've then got what's known as the deep digital flexor tendon, again running the back of the length of the leg. Now the suspensory ligament is situated right in between by where the two splint bones lie and it can be quite difficult sometimes to try and distinguish where all of these structures are. So in order to help us try and do that it's much easier if we just pick the leg up and have a gentle feel. Come on. So when we lift the leg and the leg is flexed you want to feel very gently with your thumb and finger to try and feel the soft structures. Stand still and you can feel a little bit the definition line between where the superficial flexor tendon lies and the deep flexor tendon. It's really quite easy to miss it so just feel gently and then if you go a little bit further you can then find you'll find the suspensory and the suspensory ligament should yield a little bit when the leg is flexed as should the tendons. If you find that you press and it's quite hard then the chances are that you're feeling the actual splint bones and these are the two bones that form the channel for all of those tendons and ligaments to lie through. Good boy.